What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make empanada dough from scratch two ways. Now listen, there's definitely more than two ways of making empanada dough, but I will be showing you the two ways that I make it the most. Now version one is with butter, which is going to give it a slight pastry feel. And version two is with oil, which is how my grandmother made it and how she taught me how to make it as well. Now this version is slightly easier to make because you simply kind of blend everything together and it's a hair and I mean a hair more affordable. Affordable. Now, both versions of how to make empanada dough is actually really tasty, and you can't really tell the differences too much in terms of flavor unless you're really paying close attention. Now, I will say that with any of my empanada and pastelito videos, know that I am very particular. In fact, I am so particular that my grandmother used to really tease me about it because I like to roll out my empanada dough just a little bit thinner than what you may be used to or what you've seen your grandmother, mother, or tia do. But just know that if you prefer something a little bit more thicker, just roll it out however you like. Now, like always, stay tuned until the very end of the video because I always like to share some tips and tricks just to help you guys nail these recipe perfectly each and every single time. Let's go ahead and get started. Making empanada dough from scratch is really easy, no matter which recipe you decide to go with. So first things first, we're gonna take some baking powder and some salt and we're going to add it to the all-purpose flour and we're going to whisk it together until it's well combined. Keep in mind that you can use self-rising flour to make empanada dough and if you do so, just leave out the baking powder. We're now going to add some cold butter into our all-purpose flour and we're going to mix it in together using our hands. And this is fairly easy. All you wanna do is cover the cold butter with some flour and then we're going to squish it together in between our fingers until it's well combined. And you know the butter is well combined with the flour once the flour begins to look like wet sand. Now using butter to make empanada dough is going to give your dough a pastry-like texture, feel, and flavor, which is something that I personally love. So as you can see here, the butter is well mixed in with the flour, and this is exactly what you want the flour to look like. So once your flour looks like wet sand, then you know you're ready to mix in the other ingredients. So we're now going to create a well in the center of our flour, and we're going to add in the wet ingredients. And speaking of wet ingredients, when making the empanada dough with butter, you want to make sure that your wet ingredients are actually cold. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add an egg, along with a little bit of cold water, and we're going to whisk that all together. Now I like to add the water a little bit at a time because it's easier to add than it is to take away. And once you whisk together the egg, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to very gently start adding in some of the flour. And after a little bit, we're actually going to put the fork aside and we're going to finish mixing the dough with our hands. Now, as I mentioned before, I like to add the water a little bit at a time. And that's because anytime you're making dough, a lot of it is actually feeling for texture with your bare hands. So you want a dough that's not too wet and not too dry. And as you can see here, the dough was fairly dry and still needs a good amount of water. But like I mentioned before, I like to do this a little bit at a time. So once I've mixed the dough about 50% of the way through, I actually like to set it off to the side and move on to a marble slab, which by the way, you can use a wooden slab if that's what you have. So we're going to take some all-purpose flour and we're going to add it to our work surface and then we're gonna transfer over the dough and we're going to begin kneading it. Now, unlike pie crust and other pastries, empanada dough is actually very forgiving, so you don't have to worry too much about over mixing it and over kneading it. And as you can see, my dough is still pretty dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more cold water until it comes together. I like a dough that's not too wet and not too dry. 
Now, if your dough is feeling a little bit sticky, don't worry because all you have to do is add a little bit more flour. The same way, if it's feeling a little bit dry, then all you have to do is actually add a little bit more water until it comes together. And this is something that you can feel for in your bare hands, which is why I like to use my hand when kneading dough as opposed to using a machine or even wearing gloves. So once you've made the perfect dough, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually going to roll it into one giant ball. And then we're going to take some saran wrap and just gently wrap it because you actually want your empanada dough to rest for at least an hour before you start making some disc for empanadas. So the second way of making empanada dough is actually with oil as opposed to with butter. And it's how my grandmother used to do it because it was heat resistant and it was actually a little bit more affordable. So just like before, we're going to combine the baking powder, salt, and flour. And we're going to whisk that all together until it's well combined. We're then going to create a well where we're going to add our wet ingredients. And I create a well, honestly guys, just because I don't want to dirty too many dishes. However, if you want to combine the egg, oil, and water in a separate dish, go ahead and do so. Whisk that together and then you can add it to the flour. So just like before, we're going to gently mix in the flour and then we're going to set the fork off to the side and we're going to finish mixing the dough by hand. Now the benefit to mixing the dough by hand is that you can actually feel for texture and you can add water as you need it or flour as you need it or a little bit of both. And like before, you definitely want an empanada dough that's not too sticky and not too dry. So you just want to go ahead and use your best judgment. Another thing that I love about making empanada dough is that it's actually very forgiving and it keeps very well in the refrigerator and it's not as technical as making some pie crust. So there you guys have it, my recipe for making some empanada dough two ways. Comment down below and let me know which recipe you prefer. And until next week, I'm Chef Z, y buen provecho. All right guys, here are some quick tips and tricks to helping you get this dough perfectly each and every single time. And honestly, my biggest tip of the day is actually on how to store your empanada dough. So once you've made the dough, you definitely wanna let it rest before you actually start working with it. I would say let it rest for at least an hour. And then we're going to take a huge chunk of the dough, we're gonna roll it out to our desired thickness, and then we're actually going to cut a bunch of discs. Now, you can make the disc a variety of different ways. You can use a cookie cutter, a biscuit cutter, or you can even take a round plate and cut it out, like cut out the outline with a sharp paring knife. And once you've done that, you wanna take the excess dough, you wanna put that off to the side, and then you wanna take some parchment paper that you've actually pre-cut into some squares. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to stack the disc in between parchment paper. So you're gonna take a parchment paper, you're gonna put a disc, and if you wanna make sure that that dough is not going to stick to the parchment paper, just going to take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it over top, and then place another piece of parchment paper over top until you've created a stack. And once you've created your mini stack, we're then going to take some saran wrap, and we're actually going to wrap it all gently and carefully and then we're actually going to place that into a Ziploc bag. Now, depending on how quickly you plan on making some empanadas or pastelitos, you can actually store that Ziploc bag with the disc in your refrigerator, or if you don't know when the next time it is that you're going to make the empanadas and you just want to have them on hand, go ahead and feel free to actually store them in the freezer. So what we've essentially done is created our own homemade version of the store-bought disc. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions, comment down below. And don't forget to join the Chef Z family. Come back next week when I have an all new video. And if you need some inspiration on what to make next, go ahead and click right here.